Hi friends, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an artist and a therapist. Today we are painting pansies. We're also gonna be talking about control and how to let go of it. When we try to control our paintings, pretty sure that we're trying to control our lives as well and every aspect of our life. And if we can let go of control over this, we can hopefully let go of control in our relationships, our work life and all the things. This is inspired by Shada Campbell because she painted pansies a few months ago. I watched the video. This morning I woke up and I had pansies on the brain. They're so cute. I mean, look at those faces. Look at them. They're so cute. They just want to give you a kiss. All right, friends, let's get started today to go over our supplies quickly. We have our Saunders Waterford 100% cotton professional paper, but use what you have. I have the Paul Rubens professional set. And for the brushes today, I think we're gonna go with our number eight and maybe our number two if we need it. So these are Princeton Heritage brushes. And we're gonna spray down our palette. Got our water set up. I've got a paper towel as well so that I can dab my brush if I get too much paint around on that brush so we don't have too much liquid and all the things. So we're starting with that number eight. Before we start, I should show you the reference photo, okay? So here it is, and just on my laptop here. And so I'm just looking at this to give me a nice little idea of, you know, kind of how to do it. And I'll just change it up here and there. We're gonna have different values. Now pansies come in all kinds of colors. So we have a really lovely dark purple here. It's actually full of some black because I was doing another painting and I needed some really dark purple. And so I'm adding, I added more purple to that. And then we can do some pink or some yellow or some purple, that kind of thing. And so I want to do, we're gonna do kind of like a Mickey Mouse situation happening. So we are making sure we have enough water on that brush so the paint will spread. So we're just gonna do one like this and then another one like this. Just think about Mickey Mouse, okay? And then we're going to do this bottom petal. So here it can be kind of wonky, just a little bit wavy, just like that. Adding in the color and leaving just a little white space to put in some yellow as well. And I'm going to just move this a little bit. So kind of think Mickey Mouse and then make some more wonky petals to add to that. Okay, so we've got some pink. We could certainly use some pink on there. Have you seen, seen pink pansies before? I'm curious to let me know in comments if you have. Um, that would be pretty. Okay, so we're going to do one over here. Just kind of a little wonky pink petal, Mickey Mouse ears, filling that in. And then it's kind of like that little, the chin, you know, the bib of that flower. And I want to keep these pretty close together so they're touching and they're going to be so cute once we start adding in all the little details of the face. They're always so fun. All right, so I'm going to do just a few here, kind of to the side. You're just seeing some petals just like that. And that's about it. Uh, we can do some yellow ones too. I don't have a lot of space on here, but I can just kind of start adding some in. And we might do like two little petals here. They're kind of side facing. You might not see as much of that flower. So you can make it smaller as well. And just mix that together. Okay. So let's continue with our purple here. We can even do some blue as well. That would be kind of fun. So yeah, today we are painting pansies and they're just gonna be so cute. Um, you know, I grew up with lots of florals around in the garden and um, inside the house too. We would definitely bring some of the florals in, just adding in a little bit, a little bit more color just to change it up. Let's do some blue as well. Blue can be fun. And so, you know, I do have a love for the florals. Now I don't have any really, I have some house plants inside. It's very hot where we're at in the desert. And so I don't, I don't have a lot of florals growing outside right now, but maybe as it gets cooler, I might be able to. 
because I really do like painting from references, but mostly from real life. And that's why I tend to buy myself flowers so that I can have that experience of painting things in real life. But taking photos works too. <clears throat> if that's what you can do and that's all you have around you, <clears throat> utilize that and enjoy that process. Some yellow ones here on the side. So, you know, these guys, you can use your imagination, um, you know, have so much fun with it because you can really, um, you know, make it very interesting and very cute. You can have them all facing forward or you can have them side facing as well, which is what I've been, you know, doing here, just kind of doing both of those things. I have my sample that I was playing around with. What do I have? What color? See, wasn't paying attention. Um, this morning, and so I just thought I would let you see that, but we're not necessarily following that today. So if they're side facing, sometimes you just see the puddles and sometimes you can see a little bit of the middle. And so I'm going to do again a little, it's gonna be like, let's see, how would it be? Just a little bit here. And you know, you don't have to think about it real to life necessarily. Just kind of put in some marks and go with it. Some pink, let's do some pink, adding a little bit more on our palette. And today as we're working on this together, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about this idea of control. So when we paint, we like to control the outcome, of course. When we do life, we like to control the outcome. We want to know what's going to happen. Because if we don't know, we, we feel nervous, right? We get worried. And watercolor is something that really brings out those insecurities because there's just so much that we cannot control. The water control is one thing, right? And do you have enough water on your brush to be able to do what you wanna do? Do you have too much water, too little, too little, and, you're, and there's a hair right there, couldn't control that, and that just popped in, you just deal with it. It's not a big deal. But yeah, um, is there you know too much water or too much paint? Is the paint um, not moving because you need more water? You know, do you need less water because now we've got pools and we're not able to get the effects that we want? So being able to let go of control um, starts with our art. Today I have no idea how this is going to go. I'm going to start adding my green in for my stems. I'm still using that number eight round. And we're just going to kind of do like with a sample, adding in some stems that just kind of go into this nice bouquet, um, bouquet shape. And a little bit of stem here, and it's okay if things blend. So you've got colors that start to blend together. Look at that, my line went really thick. It's okay, it is what it is. Utilize what you've created. And if it's hard to let go of control, guys, take a deep breath, okay? That would be one of my biggest pieces of advice for you. Take a deep breath, remind yourself what? This is supposed to be fun, right? And that you can always try it again if it doesn't work out how you want it. That's okay. Sorry, I'm gonna clean my brush, dab it on the paper towel, and I'm gonna lift some of this color. Everything that we do is, it's a trial and error a lot. If it's something that is new, that is not something we've been practicing for a while, we're just trying to figure it out and that's okay. I'm gonna do some open, some some open blooms up here too. I think I'm gonna grab some yellow. So I hope you are enjoying this video. If you are, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel as well so that you don't miss out on any of the tutorials or things that I post, any community posts and that kind of stuff in the future. And I am so excited that you're here today, that you're trying to learn and trying to grow and leave me a comment if you have any thoughts on this idea of control. A big one with me is when I'm starting to put on those first layers of paint, and as this is just hanging out, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow on top. I'm adding in the second layer to give dimension. Um, some parts are wet, some parts are dry. But being able to, able to envision, how is this gonna turn out? Because that first layer doesn't really tell a lot of the story. It tells very little. And to really know how things are gonna be, we have to keep going. We have to add our second layer. If we're adding in color for dimension and details, we have to add in 
Also, on top of that, um, the details that's going to tell us what things are. And once we do that, we can start to see, okay, this is where we're going. But until we get there, sometimes it feels a little bit rocky, it feels a little bit scary. So just go with it and remind yourself that's normal. That's how it's supposed to be. And that's okay. All right. Enough of the pep talk for this moment here for now. Um, I've got my lovely pink mix here. So I am going to just, I'm going to dab my brush. That was a lot. I don't want it to be super dark. I, I don't want this bouquet to all of a sudden be very dark and not, you know, vibrant and lively. So I just want to give a little bit of dimension for these florals though. So just adding in some pink moments. And you know, if you are afraid that the things are going to, the colors are going to blend together, you're always more than welcome to hit things up with a hairdryer and dry before. But that's part of the beauty of all this, you know, just trying new things out, you know, seeing how it ends up and, you know, finding new techniques in the whole process. And sometimes when you take those risks, you realize there's some really cool effects that you didn't know that you could have because you took those risks. So I'm really glad that you're painting with us today. Uh, when I say us, I'm <laughs> it's me here, but you know, maybe there's other people that are watching, that are painting as well, and hopefully enjoying. Watercolor is supposed to be fun. It really is. It shouldn't stress you out. And if it stresses you out, know that that's normal because most people, I'd say like 80 or 90% of people experience that, but also know that it doesn't have to be that way, okay? It doesn't have to be that way. And we can overcome that through our thoughts and being more positive and kind to ourselves. All right, guys. So let's start adding in some more stems. I'm going to dab my brush because there was a lot of paint and liquid on there. That's one way to water control. When you've got a lot of water on your brush, a lot of watery paint, as I like to say. All right, so kind of, you know, connecting everybody together. We're starting to get a cool design happening. I don't want this bouquet to be huge. Um, and I'm gonna add in leaves. So I think I'm gonna start doing that now. And then we'll see kind of where we get. I'm just going to change it. I have a couple reference photos that I'm referring to here. So I'm just flipping around. It's nice having the laptop there to inform me on my painting decisions. Okay, so pretty watery sap green color. And, you know, let's go ahead and just start adding in some of the foliage. So I like to do a really thin kind of stem and then just kind of dab my brush like this. You know, Shada Campbell, who is one of those wonderful and well-known watercolorists on YouTube. She says you just kind of move the brush and then you just let it, you know, make the shapes and whatever organic shapes kind of come out of that, that's what you go with. I mean, what else can you do, right? But she's like letting, you know, let, let that movement of the brush kind of determine your leaf shape. Instead of going for like very specific, you know, a C-curve shape or whatever. So, you know, I also like to dab my brush and then let it kind of dry out and do some dry brushing moments and that can be fun too. And so, yeah, just make the leaves in whatever way makes sense for you. Just hitting this up, kind of scrubbing it along the page can be kind of fun. And we'll do some, you know, here as well, I think. Well, of course. I love that. I do that all the time. I'm like, I think we're going to paint some here as I'm doing it, you know? Silly me. Anyway, my hand is ahead of what I'm saying. So I'm just adding some leaves in here just to fill out where the stems are. I'm seeing in these reference photos, there's often some leaves kind of hanging out right here, unless you pluck them off before you do your bouquet. And that might be, you know, a thing that you do if you have a bouquet of pansies, which I don't see very often. They don't seem like a very hardy flower, or yeah, that would just sustain being picked. You know, you see them more in the garden, just hanging out, being pretty. Some flowers will die, you know, within that day that you pick them. And so anyway, let's add in some green stems as well and some little blob marks too, just to start filling this out and getting a really nice composition. All right, so I will do some more marks in here. I like to cover up the white space with green, so that's what we're gonna do. 
emulating a very, very full bouquet. Now, if you don't want to have to do this, I mean, you don't have to do this at all, but if you want to avoid that and you want a full bouquet, just make sure you put your flowers closer together and then it'll be, it'll be fine. So I just sometimes, I think that's always in my mind to put them closer and then it doesn't always happen. And I'm gonna start adding in more saturated paint, just some really nice painterly marks uh, over the ones that have already dried. All right guys, it's that time to think about what is one thing that you like about your painting. You can just do some cool little brush marks, boop, boop some tiny little leaves. Maybe we add in a different color just to start to give a little interest to the painting a little bit more um, than what we have laid down. And be aware of your composition too. I tend to get a little carried away and then sometimes I'm like, wait a minute, what, what shape am I trying to do here? So, you know, be aware of that. I'm gonna take that, you know, lovely teal turquoise color and I, I'm seeing this composition. It's kind of round and it's got some coming down right here. I like that look. I think I want more of an angle over here and then here. I'm just filling that up. You're not really sure, you know, what you're going for. Just step back as you're, you know, putting down your marks and take a look and kind of evaluate how is this coming together do you feel like you like what you see? And if not, you need to add anything. Let's do a little bit more of one that sticks out right there. Okay, so I'm going to take this lovely teal color to just darken up my stems. I'm holding the brush pretty loosely in my hand and I'm just making these sketchy marks as I love to do. Really quick motions. I'm not looking for stick straight. I was just talking to my mom or texting her because she went to a paint night the other night with some ladies and she was saying how she couldn't get the sticks the branches you know really straight and that's what she was one thing she was frustrated about and I wanted and I reminded her listen in nature and I always tell people in nature um, sticks aren't straight they're just they're wonky and they have movement and they just kind of you know have these curvatures and so don't even worry about trying to get it in that certain way because that's just not natural and hopefully that made sense to her because you know there's some people that will say well my hands shake I can't paint and I say you know what the shake the shakier the better in the way that if you can accept that and let go of that control and hopefully this maybe this speaks to somebody who might experience that who feels frustrated or even maybe self-conscious about their hands and just go with it, make it be part of your art. Maybe that's the type of art that you choose, ones that are more abstract, that lean more into, um, you know, making lines and movements that aren't, you know, stick straight, right? And that allow for you know, that uniqueness. So don't worry, and if your hands shake, also it does, you know, you build up muscle memory as you practice over time. And, you know, after a while, sometimes your hands feel a bit more steady and they might as, you know, they might have tended to shake at the beginning as more, um, more than, you know, later on. So, okay, so I'm looking at my bouquet right now and I think I wanna add just a little bit right there too. Just springing out, because I'm always trying to figure out, you know, what's a good, what's a good stopping point. Uh, this guy right here, I would say, is not my favorite position. And so this is where I have to let go of that control and say, that's okay. There's a leaf that's swanky, that's stemming out right there. And probably most people won't zoom in and notice that piece of it. If they do, that's fine. If they don't, that's also fine. Okay, now we're gonna do our little faces for the places where we can. So we're gonna start with our cadmium yellow and grabbing pretty saturated amount. Now it's looking green, so I'm going to just rub this paint off on the um, paper towel and try to clean my brush. My water is greenish, so it's going to affect, um, I just want to have as pure yellow as possible. And so we're going to just stipple. I was like, what's the word, right? Stipple, add these little marks here and the centers of these pansies. 
Now they don't really look like pansies yet, but they're gonna, I promise. Once you start adding in that little face, oh, they just come to life. There's a tiny one, he's so cute. So a lot of these are side facing, but some are forward facing and we can add that. And even the ones that are side facing, they might be, they might be side facing actually, or they might be just hidden in the bouquet. You know, we can also, that can be the story that we tell. They're hidden in the bouquet and you know, actually like that. And so we can start adding in the face for those. So the face is going to be a darker color. Over here I use dark purples and let's do that. I'm literally just dipping into the paint well here. Now you wanna scrub it around just to make sure you really get good concentrated paint and you're not just getting like paint juice, all right? Where you've added water to the top and it's just sort of colored, but it's not. It's actually just, um, it's a colorful water. So if you scrub around, you're gonna get more of that. And I'm switching up, see of course, you know, this happens. We gotta remember what was the one. I'm using the number two round, but I've made this, this paint all juicy and lovely. And I've scrubbed around, so now I'm gonna dab on my paper towel so I get the liquid off of there. Too much is not helpful. And I'm going to pull up a picture that's a little bit closer. And so we have these lines that come out like little lines that little marks that make these so beautiful and i want you to be able to see the little lines as we put them in we as in me as we and i'm assuming that you're painting with me so if you get a dry brush mark kind of like that you just need more water on there all right so mix that together there's so much paint on my brush i'm dabbing and then we're going to add in the lines here okay we need more water. That's all right. It's trial and error, guys. It really is sometimes. And with your paint palette too, it's gonna depend what types of paint you have and you know what the blending is gonna look like and the mixture is gonna look like. And it's just something that you learn over time. All right, little faces. So I like using this really thin brush. It's giving me a lot of good small marks and that's what I'm wanting today so when we do this we're kind of spreading it out maybe a little bit longer here maybe a little bit shorter over here and this brush is not gonna hold you know a ton a ton of water on it because it is so small so I'm having a little bit of a problem maybe I'm gonna add it right here having a little bit of a problem getting it to smoothly go on okay so I'm just adding it here and I can grab some of the more watery paint as I need it. But look at how cute these guys are coming together. Pansies are fun. I just feel like they're these little guys, these little faces staring at you. In a good way, of course. In a course, of course. And you often will see these, you know, in landscapes, right? You see them in people's yards, but then you'll see them in, you know, at doctor's offices and business, business parks shopping centers they're obviously very popular they must be very hardy and easy to care for is what i think if they have them in so many places which is great so mark it oh like that pretty easy pretty simple and we're just we're making these marks over and over so this is that Sometimes in, in, in some of the paintings we do, I call it the tedious part, uh, where you just have to do the same motion and the same paint application over and over. But I would encourage you, if you feel like it's tedious, I'd encourage you to see it in another way. To see it in a way that it's actually very meditative. And what I mean by that is, it's a process when you're doing something over and over, not only are you getting good practice, you're starting to you know, feel like you can do it well, but as, as you are doing this over and over, you're able to kind of drift in your brain to other places. Um, sometimes you're actually involved in a flow state where you are not really thinking about anything and you're not worried about anything and you're not aware of the time or that you have to use the restroom or whatever. You're just being in the moment and our brains need that. 
many opportunities to be in the moment and relax and chill and not worry. And I don't think we get that enough, but when we do, it's very healing and it helps us to live a little bit less stressed, a little bit more stress-free. It's a little reset for our brain. And then once you come out of that flow state where you're just like, your brain is just you know painting because you know what you're doing, you're not following a class or an instruction, which is why it's hard to do flow if you're listening to me, but maybe you can paint this again later on your own and, you know, kind of experience that because it's a nice thing to be able to experience. I've just changed up the color now to this reddish purple just to be a little different. So there we go. So how are you feeling? If you are feeling stressed at all, again, remind yourself this is supposed to be fun. This is practice and just kind of get back to what you're doing, not worrying about it. There's a lot of things we are learning today, a lot of skills, especially being patient. And being patient is hard to do. I know that more than ever, more than anyone I feel. Well, we all experience that. Patience is really hard. We like to control things. There we go, back to it. We like to control our environment. We like to control our friendships, our relationships, work and all the things. So, and you know, my tendency here is to try to control what's going on with these little florals. And I'm like, okay, I hope this works out. I hope this looks like, you know, a pansy in the end of it. I hope this is a good balanced um, composition. And we've spent a lot of time working on this. And these are just thoughts that are really, they're not serving us. So it's, it's kind of something to think about letting them go and working on those positive thoughts, the things that I like, the things that I'm enjoying about this time. And I'm so proud of you for taking time for yourself. I'm really glad that you have decided to show up today. And maybe you're not painting with me today, maybe you're painting tonight or, or tomorrow or just later on. But the fact that you are here watching and maybe even commenting, I really appreciate. And if, if you have any comments about, you know, this idea of control, you know, feel free to share. I always like to hear your stories. Your stories are powerful. It's important for us to share our stories. They touch people's lives. They make changes. They inspire. All right, getting all that purple on there. So right now I'm not being as, I don't know, delicate with this as I was before. My hand, my muscle memory is kicking in with making these pansies. It's like, okay, this is the second time today we're doing pansies. I think we know what we're doing and I'm feeling a little bit more at ease with this floor composition. And that's something that happens as you practice. What would be really fun is to practice this maybe with tiny pansies and then maybe larger pansies and then maybe playing around with uh, different color schemes. I was actually thinking of doing, doing this. I'm gonna add in a little bit more of this. It's like an orangey yellow. And it's brown because of my water. And that's just what happens. And I'm gonna spray this with clean water so I can grab some paint. Purple and yellow make brown. So I was going to say we could have done this with complementary colors. And I was thinking purple and yellow, actually. And then I ended up just doing multi because I just kind of go with whatever I feel like doing at the time. And um, we'll do some stippling and make them like a nice golden center. Filling in if there's white space, extra white space, you can go over that. This one didn't have a center, so we're giving him a center. There we go. All right. So if there's anything in your life that you feel like you're trying to control and then maybe you can't control it because it is out of your control, consider letting it go and just letting life do what it needs to do. And if there's anything that you can do to change it, then by all means, try to practice that. So at this point, all of our, our pansies, yes, have faces. Okay, all of our pansies have faces. I'm so excited. All right, I think for the final piece of it, I'm trying to clean my brush here. And uh, you know, if your water gets like this, always feel free just to clean it. You know, if I'm not cleaning my water, that doesn't mean you don't need to or, or you, you know, aren't able to or whatever, you know, the water, 
I just go with it and it's gonna be okay. But sometimes people like to start with some fresh water or, you know, midway in the painting and that's always good too. Um, a little bit of this really saturated green is going to be put on here for some shadows. A little bit more. I don't want to darken everything, but I think a little bit more dimension will be good. And then we'll do splatter, guys, and then we'll be done. I'm so excited we did pansies. Okay, I woke up, no joke, I woke up this morning and I was like, I want to paint pansies. And so I was like, okay, because it's been on my mind. Also, geraniums. I would like to paint geraniums. Maybe that'll be our next tutorial. I don't know. I already filmed one for Sunday, which is going to be on lilacs and irises so that's already scheduled out for after this one this one is her this one well if you're watching it while it's coming out it is friday at least in the united states and many other places okay and also not in many other places all right just a little bit more just refining some of those brush strokes i have to look and see do i want to do more dark Sometimes I end up getting too much dark and then my painting just wasn't light and airy anymore. So yeah, I think I'm good with adding a little bit more of the green. And this one is getting a, bride, a dry brush effect and I didn't really want that. If you want to put in any thin stems, you know, to connect some of these things, by all means, go ahead. But that doesn't mean that they have to have those stems, okay? This is your painting, this is your work of art. So make it look how you want it to be, okay? That's, I think, the most important part. All right. Very nice. All right, guys, and remember, I teach watercolor on Patreon, and that's linked in the description. It's the platform where, and I'm gonna do some splatter, some purple really light. The platform where I offer exclusive tutorials and we even have live stream and even like teach you how to draw in some of the levels as well. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks for being here. A little bit of splatter and just changing up the angle of your brush so that you get it evenly distributed. And that's it. Okay, friends, so I hope you enjoyed uh, painting pansies today and talking a little bit about control. Maybe you can think of some ways in which you need to let go of some control in your life, whether it's through painting and whether it's through allowing yourself to mess up, make mistakes and all the things and learn, or whether it's through things that you're going through in your own life outside of the art world. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.